Good afternoon guys, welcome back to another video. So we are down in Lincoln at um, the Norton Disney Embryo Complex, uh, which belongs to uh, Corda. And we're on Turner's Lake, um, which is approximately 18 acres um, in size, and it holds uh, roughly about 800 carp. And um, the, it also holds the, lake, the, the, the complex or lake record uh, of a 40 pounder, well, it goes over, it goes over 40 pound uh, at the right time of year. Um, so we were talking to one of the uh, bailiffs today and apparently um, in this lake there's roughly four 40s. Um, I think there's five or six, maybe it's more 30s. There's a load of 20s. And the average, the average weight is in the teens. There's ten of us on the complex. Um, Darren's on the peg down, just, to, down, just down from here. And down from him is Paul Pard and uh, Tom Peaky Carper sharing the, that peg because it's a double peg. Uh, to my right, we've got Mick the Specimen Hunter, who's come down, who's not very well at the moment. Um, he's been having some problems with, uh, with uh, throat cancer, um, so he wanted to get out, so he's come down and he's set up on the, on the peg next to me, so uh, we'll keep checking in on him, make sure he's okay um, and whatnot. And on the other side of the lake, um, we are on the far corner. Let's turn the camera around and show you where, where we are. So, okay, so let's uh, turn it down a bit. Okay, I don't know if you can see over there. Uh, down that way. So down on the bottom over, over there is a carp of stew, a stew vintner. He's down there on a, sharing a peg with is it his son? I think he's sharing a peg with his son, I can't remember. And then up from him is Feeney. Uh, no, tell a lie, that's, that's Stu's son there, I believe. Um, I'm not sure which one. Feeney's, Feeney's the second one up. And there's two lads over there, which I don't know what you call them, them guys. So, right, yeah, so like I say, there's 10 of us on the lake. And uh, we got here. I got here for 6.30 this morning because um, the gates open at 7. So we all arranged to meet at the gates for 7 o'clock. And I said, I got here for 6.30. Um, and I, look if I'd a, I was looking if I had an hour, hour and a half sleep last night. So I was pretty, pretty knackered today. And anyway, so we got here to find out that we couldn't get on the lake till 11 o'clock. So I could have stayed in bed and uh, come down a bit later, but never mind. It is what it is. We're here now. Um, we've managed to get all set, the, everything set up. I found there. I've got my spots in front of me. Um, and from what the bailiff was saying, he was, he was saying that um, out here, 19 to something wraps is a spot which is quite all over. 13, 13 and a half, 14, 14 and a half, 15 drops down to 17 and stuff like that. So I managed to find that spot straight out, which I've got that on that. And I found that in 19 and a quarter wraps. Um, so that's straight out. I'll show you where they are tomorrow. Um, on the right hand rod, it's basically, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's like pretty even all the way through out there. The right hand rod I've got, which I found, hit on a spot of 14 and a half, feet deep I believe it is and that's that's um, uh, that's 11 and three quarter wraps out this one's 19 and a half wraps out or nine and a quarter and on the left hand spot I found a spot which is 13 to 13 and a half feet deep um, and that's at I was it 14 foot deep and that's a 13 and a half wraps out so yeah, so anyway, they're on, they've got them on the, on the spots. Um, let's say we're all set up. We can't actually get on the pegs because they're 
they're all wet, There's, the, the water level's too high. Right, so there's some pegs further down this way which aren't open yet, because uh, they've got to take some trees out, and I believe they've got to take, um, drop the water level by four foot. So, right, that's where we are, guys. Um, if anything happens during the night, I will check in. If not, I will see you in the morning, and hopefully I'll get myself a good night's sleep at night. And, uh, well, I'd like a fish, right, to wake me up, but that'd be good. But, um, yeah, if I don't, hopefully I'll get a good night's sleep, fresh for tomorrow uh, to get some bait out. And, uh, yeah, we've got, we're here for four days, well, four nights, five days. Well, tell like four and a half days, uh, because we've got to be off by 11, 12 o'clock on Friday morning. So, right, we'll leave it there, guys. I'll check in a bit later. Well, good morning, guys. Um, it was sort of uneventful night last night. Well, for me, anyway. Um, I had, first of all, on the middle rod, I had what was a pickup. And when I got out, there was nothing there. It was like a drop back. And uh, just like, like a little drop back on the rod when I got out. So... It didn't move. I waited a few minutes. It didn't move no more. So I just left it, got back into bed. And then again through the night, um, my right hand rod went off. So I ran out to get into that one. And when I got to the rod, it had stopped again. So I don't know if I was done by a fish or if it was the birds, because I've got bird life all over me. So it's possible, I'm thinking now, because it's, it's happened again this morning, um, roughly eight o'clock, um, my middle rod went off again. Um, so I ran out, I hit it this time, and there was nothing there, but there was birds all over me, all over where that, that, rod's, that rod is out there. So, so now I'm thinking all, them, all three was, all, was just birds. On the plus side though, there's two carp come out last night. Stu has had one and Simon, I think you call him over the way. Uh, he's had one out as well. So, um, but Stu's in the good, he's in the good, in one of the hot spots um, where all the, the snags are over that side and apparently the fish are holding up there. So, um, he's got a good, he's got a good peg, um, but, Simon, I think the lad that got the other lad that got the fish, he's I think he's virtually straight opposite me, I believe. So it shows the fish are moving up this way of the lake and like we sort of central. Um so it's looking good really. I mean the f the fish are coming out so we're in with chance we're in with a chance anyway regardless. Um so I'm just having a coffee. Um, I'm going to bring you the two rods in and then um, I'm going to re redo them, get them back out and fingers crossed we'll get one of these embryo carp out. <clears throat> it's a nice day today anyway, the, sun, uh, the sun's out now so it's going to be a nice day. Um, I think it's got to get about 16, 17 degrees a day, so I'll show you the lake anyway. Well, in front of me anyway. If you can see with this little tree that's in the way. Let's have a look. I might have to adjust the, the light because it'd be a bit like, overexposed at the moment until I adjust it. Right, so uh, I don't know, I can't see it, can you? There's a peg over there, uh, which is what I, I'm fishing towards. So straight out in front, behind that tree, there's a peg and Um, there's a, an area there what I'm fishing on 
That's uh, 19. That's a 19 and a quarter wrap one, that one. And then over this way, there's another peg over that way. I'm fishing towards that peg. And that one's at 11. No, it's not. What's that? No, 13. Some wraps, I can't remember now. I've got all written down in here. But I believe that's the peg there, over there, that the fish has come out on. Either that one or that one straight opposite me anyway. And then the other one is down. The fish has come out this far in, further around this way. Uh, in the corner there, where the trees are, there's a peg. I think I don't think you see them two babies straight off, just behind that tree, that, breeze, that little tree is blocking it. But that's where Stu's had a fish from, over there. Right, so. The ground's all over the place, I know it's not level or nothing. I've got my bivy on a tilt. Yeah, that's where I've put my rods. Because that's... I just hear an alarm going off down there, somebody's into a fish. Um, this here, yeah, that's where you're supposed to put your bivy. <coughs> <coughs> but it's full of water. So you're having to bivy up on the grass. Um, so I think if they decide, and if they, they do take this, drop this by four foot, which they're supposed to be doing, and be able to get on the pegs what they've built. No, oh, I don't think it was. It was Darren next door, his lambs are going off the swans. The swans are in your swim. <laughs> Caught yourself a swan. <laughs> yeah, it's much better day today, but like I say, I've got birds all over me, diving on my spots. You wouldn't think they'd get down that far, would you? 14 foot and 13 foot. Anyway, guys, uh, the battery's flashing on the camera, so it's going to go dead shortly. So uh, I'll stop there. I'll stop it here and uh, get the battery charged back up. Well, put a new battery in while that one's charging. And hopefully something happens today. Um, get into a fish. Three more nights left after today. I'll be happy with just the one. I've got new rig. I've tied a new rig on the right hand rod. I've put a Ronnie rig out, seven inch boom. Um, so and I've done it with a, I've made it with a curve shank hook. So I don't know if it's working properly or not. I'm a bit, I don't really use them. So I don't know whether to put a different type of rig on, go back to my old rigs or tie that one up that Stu was on about was the, uh, the, is it the combi, the multi. Um, the one that Julian Kun diffuses, I can't remember what it's called now. Tie that one up. Don't know what I'm going to do. I'll decide later on. Right, anyway, guys, I'll check in a bit later.
Okay, so you just see me put some spot mix over my left hand rod, which is out at three, uh, sorry, 13 and whoop. So that my left hand rod's out at 13 and a half wraps. This is now going to be doing my right hand rod, which is over to the right is a another peg that nobody's in. So I'm casting sort of just left and towards that, which is about there. Actually, it went a bit too left that one. Doesn't matter because I'm going <coughs> to spread the bait a bit. This is just uh, pellet fours, sixes. Uh, sorry, yeah, six and fours, six mil, four mil, two mil pellet, which is Sonu baits. Um, one of them is an oily pellet, and then the tiger flavour, tiger nut flavour, uh, and I've got some four mil black halibut pellet in it. Not a lot, just enough to break the colour up. And I've also got whole krill boilies, sticky baits krill, some whole sticky baits manila boilies, 15 mils both of them. And I've also put some chops in. I put, uh, I've got the 16 mil, um, the 16 mil Ridge Monkey chopper. So it's got like five tunnel channels in it, or six channels, something like that. And you can cut, you can fit five boilies in each channel. So I've put two lots of each boilie in halves, put in as well. And then I've also put some krill and tuna oil in as well. That's going to be too far right. That's brought it back a bit. I ain't used to this style of fishing. Most of you, as you guys know, that watch my videos. Most of my fishing is pretty much close in. Fishing lakes where I've got some. Uh, uh, to aim at like a island or something like that. Or oh, I'm using the, mainly using the uh, bait boat. So when you got using that a lot, quite a lot, and you tend to get a bit lazy, I believe. And uh, then your accuracy goes out the window. So I really need to do a lot more of this, this style of fishing really. Get me eye in and get get more practice at uh, accuracy. Well, obviously, what the fuck's up in there? Wrap right around the tip of me rod. There we go. Right, put two more in and that'll do that rod. <coughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely lashed down last night. So, um, and now the ground's wet and seems to be running down under me bivvy. Nightmare. Uh, Sun's out now, like, and the wind seems to have dropped a bit. We sort of like, with the trees behind us, it sort of blocks the wind. Um, but I put the drone up and it nearly tipped over with the wind. You go around the other side of the lake, like, where the toilets are. You go around there, and it's like gale force wind. Yeah. 
I mean, I believe we've got to get to 16 degrees, 17 degrees today, so fingers crossed we'll bring the fish on. There's uh, Stu Vinter's had two fish out. Um, his biggest was 20 pound 10, I believe. And a lot across the way, he's had a 21 pound summit out. Um, there's a few fish being lost. I've had enough of them. Again. So, actually, I should have took that out, out the clip. I don't think it's come open. No, it does. I should have took that out of the clip because the next one's going to go out in 19 and, 19 and a quarter wraps. So, I'll chuck another one out and take that out of the clip. And then I'll have to put a stone in it or something because this other one's set at 13 and a bit wraps, which I never took out the clip. And then might, I'll get it done. Right, last one. So have a look. Boosh. Out the clip. Right, that's out the clip. Let's hope it's opened. It's opened. Right. <coughs> okay. Let's find a stone to put in it. And then we'll just uh, be something down here. Here we go. There we go. Let's hope it doesn't get lodged in. <laughs> right. I'll chuck this out the way of me swim this one. I'll chuck this to the right. Saying that, I'm not sure where Mick's got his. I'll go straight out and make it to it. Stone's not going to hurt us yet. Oh. There we are. Oh, I did take out the clip. Oh well. Right, oh well. That went a canny distance. Right. <coughs> okay, let's get this wrapped up at 19 quarter wraps. We'll put over the other rod. Alright guys, I'll catch you in a minute. Well good morning guys. So another uneventful night last night. No fish at all for me. In fact I think only one fish came out through the night. Uh, and that was on the other side again. So that was it. And as you can see now, it's shitty weather, it's raining. Uh, so mm. I haven't touched my rods yet. But I don't know whether they're bring them out about dinner time. If the rain stops, that is. Redo them. If it doesn't stop, they're staying out. Yeah, what a lousy day. I haven't actually checked the weather forecast this morning. So by four o'clock, it's got to stop raining by the looks of it. And then it's cloudy. Bet the day tomorrow though, it's gonna be sunshine tomorrow from 10 o'clock. Southwesterly winds, south southwest. Today's northeast at the moment. Um, it's got to change later on to a southwesterly. But strong winds, 30 mile an hour winds. Low pressure though, 998, nine, 999 nine, nine low uh, pressure. Then on Friday, it looks like rain by 10 o'clock, or a shower, 0 0.9 mil. So it's gonna be a wet pack down on Friday. Well, anyway guys, let's say if anything happens, I'll check back in. 
If not, I don't know if I'll get much video undone, to be honest with you. Um, the way the weather is and whatnot. And, like, nothing to film, really. So, I'll catch you a bit later, guys. Set it as a drop off so it shouldn't the ledge on the drop, but it just flashed up to the surface. You know, like a little stocker just there, yeah. Here, look, that's not a bad size. So, IQ, do you? Two, we filming? You've got two of them, yeah, yeah. Apple. All right, guys, welcome back. So, we're on the final night. Somebody's got a headlight on. Paul has. Uh, headlight on. Sorry, sorry, guys. So, so, we're on the final night and we're going to be doing beer of the session. But what we need to do is, and I need some help from you Pretty guys and all, it's because I want to change the name from beer of the session to something else. Because yeah, you've got fresh, uh, fresh fish and they call it beer of the session. And you've got. Um, and you've also got Vini Nathan Stamp, uh, who does Beer of the Week. To, uh, so, we Royal need to change the name. Yeah, so, I need help from you guys to pick a better name uh, for so we can do ours. Right, so this week we've got another two bottles to do, and um, but we've got some guests in with us today, they're gonna to do the test as well. We've got Pete Carpers, Tom, he's next to Darren, and we've got Paul Pard, who's also gonna do a test as well. So the first one we're gonna test is Trooper. Oh. There you go, it's called Tr Can you see it, let's have a look. It's allowed to happen, isn't it, that's why. This one in, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, it's called Trooper. We'll and it is a premium British beer. We've all got the same one. So, and it's made by Robinsons. So, I can't see the look right on the back because it's dark, so we're not going to do it. We're not going to read what's on the back. But let's get to the test. Right, right, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Right. Right, so this is beer number one. Yeah. That's quite nice. It does. Fuck that, bro. It's floral, but it's nice. That's it's very hops hoppy. in it. Very hoppy, that. Yeah, very hoppy. It's got a lot of malt in it, yeah. Mm. Malt is nice, though. That. That's a nice yeah, beer, though, mate. That is. That At first, yeah. I thought because it had a bit of froth on it, but I think that's a nice beer. It's got a Guinnessy taste. It has, yes, mm. yes. Mm. That's nice, that. Malty, very. Bit of iron in it. Mm. Nice. What do you pick? Fucking bitter. I can't stand bitter. Well, that's beer, Dad. You ain't going to get lager mm. at the Deal, it's a premium bitter. It's a bloody beer. 4.7 volume. Mm -hmm. That's a parallel. Made in Cheshire, that. England. Is that a parallel? It's, it's, it's something to do. They've named it something off the Iron Maiden, the band. That's the band, mate. I can't, I can't see the small print on the back. It tastes like an IPA, though, like an Indian It does, yeah, it does taste like an IPA. Mm. Yeah, it's a nice drink, though. Mm. It's about. <laughs> does spat it out. It's about 160 odd, odd a bottle, I think, 180 bottle. That's quite nice. That's it. Which one did you do before? Did you do the, the Peaky Blinders or what? It, the last time you did it? No, it was... Who did that one? Walt. Walt or somebody, no, somebody put it on a chat. A bottle of it. I think it might have been Stu. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Peaky Blinders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can try that one next time. Yeah. On the next one. We'll yeah. get that and do that on the next one. Have you tried it, mate? No, I ain't no, tried it, no. no I've never. Where would you get this from, Paul? Is it, is it easily obtainable? Where or did, did Asda. Oh, Asda? Yeah, in Asda. Is there, many, is there many of them about? What has this? <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so, mate. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> sorry, mate. No, it is a good beer. Yeah, Get sorry, on it, then. guys. See what you think. It's fucking shite. Mm -hmm. See, you just haven't got the tongue, mm -hmm. the palate, shall I say. <laughs> Never mind the tongue. Oh. I like bitter. You don't oh. like bitter? No. I thought you was, I thought you was a connoisseur and all that. Yeah, I thought that's it. Darren, Darren's the type of guy that gets the white lightning in the yeah, tramp on the corner of the street. 20, 20. Uh, Darren's the <laughs> type of guy who gives the girl an eye. Everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you lay your right, that's your own, bruv. That's all right, that night. <laughs> I'll get a live, live take. Oh, it's not as yet. good as that mm. other one, though, from last time. That, um, the fisherman one. That's fucking yeah, shit. That was fucking lovely. Yeah, that's, yeah but you don't drink IPA. That was an IPA. Yeah. Was it? It's like that Abba yeah. Al, mate. You this tastes like an IPA, though. Fuck, it blows your sweet yeah. off, bruv. You never tear up on that Abba Al, mate. Well, I've never had it. has got more of a real ill taste. I thought I could, mate. Really? Makes me feel mm. wild. It's the opposite of the floral taste that makes mm. you feel like an IPA. Mm. I can't see the. It's very floral. See the, what's in it? it is, yeah. I know what you mean by that. Yeah, I know yeah. what you're saying. It's like flowers. Yeah. 
Nice though. Like, uh, what are them things you used to get? Palmer violets. Remember them little purple yeah. sweets? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's got like a tinge Running of that to, to yeah, it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Some are flowery in there. Mm, without a doubt. A rosy. I'll let you read the bottom one. Like rosy. <laughs> Palmer. I could drink that a lot. I could drink, drink a lot of it. I can't fucking drink it. Could down a few bottles. Yeah. You get your fist anyway. Oh, oh fuck me, fast yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, it's 4.7. Yeah, so I mean, you get your pissed fast. You're on a, you're on a Troy. He comes in a little bottle. I think the Jamaicans drink it. I forget what it's called. Red Stripe. Oh, um, ah, nice in a little bottle. The um, yeah, it's called um. Oh, I'll tell you what it's called. You got Magnum. Gold. Magnum. <coughs> Magnum. It's called Ma Magnum. No, Mag I've yeah, it's seen. in a little yeah. bottle. I remember they used to drink the old barley wine. That's about 15, mm -hmm. 15 yeah, percent. Yeah, that's barley wine. It used to be called um, it's called barley wine. Uh, I can't Magnum, remember the yeah. company who does who does it. Something, but it's a gold tin. It's called barley wine. It's, yeah, it's, it's like nice. label stuff. No, not that. It's in a bottle. <laughs> That's another good chat up line, that does. So, yeah. <laughs> person shouts you slug. <laughs> <laughs> I'll smack it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me squirt some salt on you slug. What did you cook me? Yeah, mate. <laughs> oh, so fuck. Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. It smells like banana, though. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like. <laughs> Yeah, it smells like banana. Oh, somebody's knocking my front door. Who the fuck is that this oh. time of night? Right, guys, you know, so bruv. now we're going to do the second bottle. So this one's called Eagle Brewery Banana Bread Beer. Yeah, then fish out there. 5.2%. No. Um, I don't know where it's made from, I can't see. It. But that's a bottle anyway. Don't know if you can see it. I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, hang on. Do you knock the door again? Uh, I'm out at my missus in now. Do you knock the door? I don't know don't if you can see that bottle from there. It's too dark, to... isn't it? Right, anyway. Oh, cheers. Anyway, banana beer bread. Banana bread beer, sorry. So, cheers, guys. Let's give it a taste. Yep, yeah, let's have a go. I'll tell you what. Oh, it does not smell like banana. Mm. Oh, it's nice. Could it's nice. That, one, mate. that one is quite nice. Mm. Smells more like banana than it tastes like banana. Mm. Yeah, oh mate, you're right there, Paul. Yeah. Mm. Quite Does it taste like banana? It has got it has it has got that taste. I don't know, no. I'm not sure about that one. You don't no. like it? Nah. I think it's nah. better than the no, first one. No, no, it's, it's not unlikable. The first one I think was more drinkable, I think. Yeah. But yeah. long term, I couldn't drink this long term. You know what you can taste? The bread. Yeah, yeah. The bread, bread and banana, yeah. yeah. So, Elvis would yeast. like that. Yeast. yeast. Yeah. It's nice though. Elvis would like that when he used to like peanut say, butter So this is obviously, if you probably read it, it's probably been brewed with beer yeast. Uh, sorry, yeah. bread yeast yeah, rather than nice a beer yeast. Oh, Fucking bit of hooch bath on the That's why it's 5.2%. You, you couldn't drink it. What's I the could, percentage of it, Paul? Yeah, I could drink this one. What's the percentage? 5.2. Five. Oh, it's got a bit of kick to it then. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, fuck. How dark is it though? I don't know. I think it's light, to be honest with you, mate. And where it was this like one from, Paul? Is it stopped is locally, it? or is it somewhere you went to a beer speciality? This is this was also in Asda as well. <laughs> is that is that is that popular? Yeah, very popular, <laughs> mate. Okay, I think just so everyone can get clear on that. I could, I, mm. I, I could drink that. And who time. brews it? What's the brew company? Is it tell you or? Yeah, it's on the top of the bottle there, mate. Eagle. Eagle. Eagle Brewery. Oh, okay. I like Eagle, mate. It's like Crystal Palace, mate. The football team. <laughs> It's oh, unusual shit. that though. Shit like Paul Frampton. Fuck off, mate. That does. <laughs> it would be better. Yeah. Right, well, anyway, guys, well, that's the beer of the session. So, well, banana I've bread, got beer the, bread. I've got three choices. West Brom. What are your thoughts on it? Sorry? What are your thoughts on it? Five choices on, then. On the beer, this no, beer. Yeah. Birmingham. Birmingham City. I prefer that one. West Villa. Brom. Villa. The first, no, the first I, I, long term yeah. drinking, oh. I would say I'm with you with that. Yeah, yeah. It's a big deal for a short time. I could have seen me drinking this all night. It's nice. I think it's nice. I drink this. I wouldn't go that. I'm waiting to buy that, definitely not. No, yeah. I would. Yeah. Oh, I'll buy nice. that again. Yeah, the first one, yeah. I'm firm when they taste it because I don't know what I'm doing. I have bananas every day when I'm at work. Right, anyway, guys, beer of the session. Catch us later. Now let's get mm. on the line. What's it called again, Paul? Ooh, look at that. Beer is <laughs> Yeah, no, the beer. <laughs> oh, this banana bread beer. Banana bread beer is nice, guys. Well, you know what you need as well? Like uh, the dunkability test. But you need something dunk. else. You need something What's else. What do you dunk in alcohol, though? I don't know, your finger. Me knob. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get your knob at the end of that, mate. Darren, sorry out, Rav. 
<laughs> you need something like that, don't you? The dunkability test. Dunkability. It's gangability, mate. Oh, I don't know, it's got to be something. you got to eat with a kebab or something, haven't we? Like kebab or... <laughs> when you get a...